Hi there, in this one we're going to talk about how to create a sub UI that we can dynamically load into and remove from our Unreal Demo UI here. So if you remember from the previous video, what we are doing is using file dialog to get a list of file paths that then we could do whatever we wanted with. So what I want to do is I want to add these file paths to the UI in such a way that they can be removed if the user decides that they want to pull some of these out from their original selection. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new widget. And into that widget, I'm going to drag a button and a line edit. I'm going to put the button and the line edit into a vertical layout. And then I'm going to take the whole thing. And either one of these is going to give the same result because there's only one element, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it into another layout here so that it stretches to the, the bounds of my UI. And then I'm going to squish it vertically. And you can see there's going to be this gap around it. If I have the Q widget up here in my object inspector selected, and I scroll down to this pink area, if I zero these values out for the margins, then I'm going to be able to squish it even more. And that's kind of what I'm looking for there. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as my sub UI. Call it sub widget. And now I need to add a layout to my primary UI for this to get added to. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. We can destroy the existing layouts. And I'm going to add, let's see, we'll put close over here. We'll give it a little bit of a horizontal spacer. We'll just make this kind of legit. And then I'm going to have an open files button. Maybe we'll stick that up the top there. Give it a couple of spacers. And now I'm going to add a scroll area. So the scroll area is only going to generate a scroll bar when the contents of the scroll area exceed the vertical height. So we won't see anything until we get to that point. And inside of the scroll area, I'm going to add a vertical layout. You can see how we're going to be orienting our items here. If we wanted to make a column layout, we would use this horizontal layout. But I'm going to be adding this as a row here. So this is important. I'm going to need to, uh, to reference this in the code. So I'll just call this one like uh, EL sub widget. I'm going to rename this BTN here to, or the button to a BTN remove. And I'm going to set the text to remove. And then we'll add a layout in here. And then finally a layout, a horizontal layout to the whole thing so that it all opens up like this. Hopefully that's relatively clear. I'm going to go ahead and save everything. And that'll be all we need to do, at least initially, to set up our sub UI and our primary UI to accept drops from this process here. The first thing we need to do is identify the vertical layout that we created. I'm just going to copy all this here. And this thing is going to be Q V box layout. Q V box layout. And its name is VL sub widget. All right, great. The next thing we need to do is create new widget objects. So I'm just going to copy this. And we'll be doing this in our open files method. So rather than printing, or perhaps in addition to printing, we'll just leave that in there for the time being. I'm just going to make a thing called sub widget, set it equal to this. And we need to update our path so that we're pointing at sub underscore widget. So now we've created a sub widget. We need to go ahead and add it to our layout. And that process is pretty easy. Just use the add widget method. And we will add sub widget. So for now, I will leave it there. We'll just test it out real quick. Great. So here you can see we're creating, for each file path, we're creating a sub widget and loading it here into our UI. Because I've only got three 
I'm not actually activating the scroll bar. So let's set this uh, so that we're using a few more. So we'll say asterisk.jpg, asterisk.bng. I can't remember if I need to put commas there, so we'll just try it and see where we land. Right, okay. And now you can see when I have enough sub widgets that I've loaded into this layout, I'm getting my scroll bar. Let's go ahead and add the file paths to the line edit. I'm gonna create a local variable here inside the open files method. It doesn't have to be self. I don't have to uh, refer to this anywhere else in the class here. And then I'm just gonna copy this. So we don't want self.widget. What we're looking for here is our sub widget object. And then we're gonna do find child and we need to tell it specifically what it is. In this case, it's going to be a line edit and it is called line edit. Now we can just set the text. And this is one of those things that's really easy to find so I'm not gonna go through the trouble of showing the, the uh, documentation on it. If you look for PyQt line edit, this will be one of the things that pops up right at the top. Do I reload? And here we can see, we now have all of the file paths associated with each texture I selected added to the line edit. Let's go ahead and hook up these remove buttons. going to be a Q push button and it is called BTN remove. So we're going to have a clicked event that we need to call a method on. So let's go ahead and create that method. So I'm avoiding the method name or uh, remove widget because that is reserved uh, by the widget, so I don't want to confuse it. But what I need to do here is I actually need to pass in an argument, which is specifically which widget I want to remove. So this whole thing here is a widget, and that's what I'm going to be passing in to this remove sub widget. And I'm going to be removing it from this layout. And as I mentioned, the method for removing a widget is called remove widget. So again, that's why I put that little sub in there. And then we'll just pass in sub widget. So now we're presented with a little bit of a technical issue, which is how do I do a clicked connect event here where I pass in an argument, the sub widget. So it's actually pretty easy. Let's go ahead and we'll just do btn underscore remove dot click dot connect so this is the normal way of doing it but I, I need to pass in this uh, this argument here of the sub widget so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use partial which we can get from funk tools so from funk tools import, import partial and you can see the uh, comment here is if you want to include args with UI method calls hopefully that's clear but the way that you do it is basically encapsulate our connect here. And the first thing that we're gonna throw in is gonna be the method, this guy. And then we're gonna feed the argument. And we need to add an extra parenthesis there at the end. So when the button removed that's associated with this sub widget gets clicked, it's going to run this method and it's gonna pass in this sub widget, which will say, hey, this layout Go find this guy and remove it. There's one more thing we need to do here, which is to destroy this sub widget when we're done with it. And the way to do that is with delete later. So that just kind of cleans it up on the memory side. Okay. So here is all of the uh, sub widgets we've we've loaded in. I'm going to go ahead and just click remove, and you can see as I do, each one is removed from our layout. And if I want to add more, I can do so. 
All right, so in the next video, we'll take a look at a practical example of how we can use data stored in our UI to do something useful. So stick around for that.